Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously, Mofan was somehow able to awaken two rare talents, but kept it a secret until he had to use them in a difficult duel. He is eventually forced to move to another city where he would shockingly awaken another two talents. During a practical, he must undergo an experiment that transforms him into a demon to save his friends. After disappearing for a while, he is found but must collect soul essence to avoid being killed by the demon talent. The story continues just after Mofan is finished transforming. Zhang reminds him about the plan, so he deals a massive blow to the ground, and they get sucked in by the whirlpool that forms. Underground, Liman explains that the seed is nearby, but its power is now dissipating since they made a hole in the ground. Zhang is the only earth user among them, so Mofan tells him to take it. It is one of the finest earth spirit seeds that exist, and will allow him to create large swamps that bog down enemies and inflict them with poison. Afterwards, the trio watches the battle ends with the worm coming out victorious. Mofan's friends can't believe their eyes when Mofan makes his way to the battlefield. He receives the powerful commander level spirit fragment for his trouble and explains that it will help keep his mind from being tormented by the demon element. Just then, the worm comes after him, but Liman uses expert tier magic to save him, leaving Zhang in awe of her power. They let the worm escape and Mofan reminds Liman of their deal. She offers to have soldiers come help dissemble it, but Mofan says that that won't be necessary and offers to sell it to her instead. She explains that the military would love to dissect a commander level reptile and accepts. Later, Mofan is in his head and explains that the repercussions for having the demon talent are getting worse every day. The reptile remnants he had consumed have not been enough to help him achieve a breakthrough, but now it's time to try the commander level spirit essence. The process might kill him, but he is running out of time and has no choice. Later, Zhang goes to meet Commander Kong to surprise him with Mofan. He explains that he couldn't believe it when Zhang told him that he was still alive and Mofan reveals that his life was actually hanging by a thread. The results of a full body checkup show that Mofan's body has been fully cleaned of the demon blood and his soul is beginning to heal. Furthermore, his body has developed a tolerance to the blood relic. This means that it won't have any effect on him anymore and he can no longer perform the demon transformation. Kong explains that it was never an actual talent, only a temporary source of power that he gained from a stimulant. The power still resides in him, but just in a different form. Zhang is optimistic about their future, but Kong reveals that there is still a price to pay for his subordination. He does not regret finding Mofan one bit, but accepts his punishment. Kong demotes him to low rank guard and sends him to a post in Song City. Later, Mofan takes the blame for Zhang's new post, but Zhang says it won't be that bad since Song City is so peaceful. Mofan explains that he will be headed to Song City as well and they say their goodbyes. When Mofan is alone, he reveals that he can feel the devastating blow that's been dealt to his soul and how each of his elements has gone down a level. Elsewhere, a man named Lin fortifies a damaged bridge to help Zenzai across even after she rejected his assistance numerous times. Girls nearby remark how popular he is and can't understand why he keeps approaching Zenzaya. They assume that it is out of pity and openly mock her about her disability. Lin tries to stop them, but the girls continue their nasty insults. However, in that moment, Mofan appears to shock them and explains that his sister isn't someone they should mess with. They can't believe he would do that to a group of ladies, but Mofan says he only sees a group of fish in the water. They challenge Mofan but instantly regret it when he gives them a taste of his lightning magic. Lin is amazed at such absurd power and Zenzaya rushes to greet her brother. The two catch up and Lin arrives to introduce himself to Mofan. Mofan has no interest in speaking with Lin, but he explains that he is just looking out for Zenzaya. Mofan points out though how he had not done anything when she was being bullied, and believes that Lin cares more about protecting his popularity. Lin doesn't take the disrespect lightly, and onlookers can't believe someone would try to talk down to the Ice Prince of Song City. They explain that guys are always trying to talk to Zenzaya, but they all fear the powerful Lin. However, it is made clear to everyone that Mofan is the one that should be feared when he easily overpowers Lin with just one spell. They leave and he warns Lin to never show his face to him again. Some rude people steal their taxi, but Mofan remembers that he now has his own transportation. That night, they enjoy a meal after Mofan spent the day spoiling his little sister with gifts. She makes him promise to stay out of trouble from now on and Mofan uses his shadow magic so that the two can share a dance for the first time. However, they are interrupted when they spot a strange object outside the window. It is revealed to be a large serpent, sending everyone into a panic as it approaches their building. Just then, a winged man appears, stopping its attack and making it somehow disappear. Mofan comforts his sister and they head home. It is explained that the citizens of Song City should not be alarmed about the appearance of the giant serpent. The government has issued a statement announcing that it was actually a newly developed beast shadow projection spell and there were no casualties. 
However, some citizens refuse to believe that since the creature seems so real to them. Mofan completely agrees, explaining that he knows shadow magic very well and that a projection spell could never create what he saw that night. This makes him wonder what the government is hiding and he gives Miss Tang a call. Elsewhere, Zhang stops a tamer from beating on a beast. The tamer explains that the birds are used to fight, but this one in particular is not of pure blood and can hardly understand commands. He claims that it's just a waste of food, but Zhang is done listening. He explains that taking his anger out on the bird makes him the real animal. Zhang must put the tamer in his place when he becomes unruly and the man can't believe how powerful a low rank guard can be. Zhang then takes the beast so that he could feed him and set it free. When he does, we see that he has a wound on his arm. Elsewhere, Mofan meets with Miss Tang and explains what he saw that night, revealing that he thinks the serpent might even be stronger than a commander level beast. He thinks to himself how the creature probably could have killed him with one attack even in his demon form. Miss Tang explains that there used to be several villages beyond the barrier and she was born in one of them. Since they are not protected by the barrier, several monsters roam free. This means that the residents of the village must be powerful mages and what might even look like a fragile little girl could actually be a powerful hunter. She explains that the only reason monsters can invade her village is because it has the blessing of a god. Mofan eagerly wants to know which god it is so he could pray to it for some of that good protection, but she reveals that he has already seen it. Mofan is shocked to hear it's the snake. He is convinced that her and the other villagers must be snake people. She says that kind of stuff is taught in history class, but he reveals he never really listened in class. The villagers don't usually share their information with outsiders, so Mofan remarks how they should get married so they don't have any secrets between them. She offers to take him there, but he refuses, explaining that it's pretty obvious that a weird village like hers does stuff like human sacrifices. She points out how he seems more scared than usual, and he reveals that he has been having visions of the serpent every time he closes his eyes. She says that it's because the serpent had chosen him as his prey, and was just waiting for the right time to eat him. Mofan changes his mind, and the two head to her home village. Outsiders are not allowed, but Miss Tang explains that she will take full responsibility. She takes a key from the guard, but he clearly seems upset. Inside a temple, she shows Mofan a mural of the serpent, and he finally begins to believe that it's protecting the village. She says that the serpent is a totem beast. These beasts have always protected humans, and so the people worship them. She explains that the beast is actually there protecting them as they speak. Many magic organizations are afraid of their power being too strong, so they are kept a secret, and seals are used to keep them from leaving certain areas. Guards are in charge of keeping them from being revealed, and she is one of them. Furthermore, no one knows how or why it appeared in the city, and she explains that it normally only reveals itself when it senses a powerful threat. She chose to be in Bo City because of the possibility that there might be totem beasts somewhere there. Mofan remembers how Zenzaya said something similar and thinks about what else the Black Curia want from Bo City. Mofan then notices a little baby serpent in the mural, but she explains that it's the one protecting her village and the one he saw that night in the city. It was the size of a skyscraper and he can only imagine how big it will be when it grows up. Afterward, she explains that she has a favor to ask after revealing everything to him. Mystical snakes shed once every decade, but they become extremely weak when they do. Its enemies and those with ulterior motives will take the opportunity to make a move whenever it happens. There is also believed to be a traitor among them, so she needs someone that she can trust to protect it while it's shedding. He explains that he needs some time to think about it, and Miss Tang tells him about how it had protected her growing up. Mofan can see that she obviously cares for this creature and agrees to help. That is, as long as he gets to keep its skin since he has heard that snake skin can be made into great magic armor. Just then, she sees that it's being reported that the snake may not have been an illusion after all, and people are beginning to die because of poisonous after effects left by the serpent. Miss Tang is furious since it's obvious that someone is trying to frame it. Elsewhere, Zhang is surprised to see that the bird has actually returned. It clearly wants to stay by his side after giving him medicine for his wound, so Zhang gives it the name Huey. Later, Mofan and Miss Tang arrive at the Magic Court Hall where they are discussing the serpent. Miss Tang introduces Mofan to the man that chased the snake away that night, Judge Heiyu. One man loudly demands that the snake be handed over to them for the sake of eliminating its hidden danger. His name is Zumeng and he belongs to a group that strongly believes that all threats to the city be eliminated. His opposer is Mr. Lu. He believes that Zhu Meng's real intentions are to become president of the Magical Association and is simply trying to gain more supporters. Zhu Meng says that they should reveal to the public that the Magic Association is raising a giant snake that has the ability to wipe humanity off of the face of the planet. Miss Tang speaks out of turn, but the head of the association, who is also her uncle, agrees that they shouldn't jump to conclusions. 
However, Zumang demands that they hand over the serpent in the next day or warns that they will take it by force. Afterwards, the head of the magic association named Zong decides that Miss Tang must take it somewhere safe. Heyu would like to accompany her, but it's explained that the snake becomes extremely wary during Exodus and will regard high-level mages other than Miss Tang as enemies. Heyu is skeptical that Mofan can do anything against Zumang's high-ranking guards, but the head says he is the only one that can help since he is a mid-tier mage. That night, Miss Tang explains that they will transport the snake in a totem pearl. It has energy that can sustain the life of the mystical snake, but once the energy runs out, it won't be able to survive inside and must be released. She calls out to the beast and once it appears, explains that she will take it somewhere else for its shedding. She introduces Mofan as a naughty disobedient student and it seems to recognize him from the city. She performs a ritual and reassures the beast that nothing bad will happen. Mofan can't believe the giant thing is actually in the pearl and Miss Tang tells him to stop fooling around since they need to leave right away. Mofan calls in Zaya to tell her that he will be gone for a while but hears lots of noise around her. She explains that she's helping out at the hospital since lots of students have come down with a strange disease. Elsewhere, Zumang scolds his subordinate for allowing the snake to get away and orders that Miss Tang be arrested. We see that Mr. Liu is there as well and he explains that he wanted to warn them about the Totem Clan's plan. However, Zong seems to be suspicious of him and was keeping him busy. Mr. Liu has a plan though and decides that they will send every intern in the magic court to capture them. The serpent will only detect high tier mages but the interns are only mid tier so they decide to send them all. Elsewhere, we see that Mofan and Miss Tang are being directed by the serpent and have stopped to get some rest. Everyone there is wearing a mask though and it is explained that the people in that city are being afflicted by a strange disease. The news has spread and everyone now seems to think that the snake is the cause. The people in the town are convinced that finding it will be the only way to stop the plague. Mofan, always being the gentleman, tries to comfort her but she reminds him that he has a room of his own. Later that night she calls to him and he arrives instantly, making sure to get close so no one hears their conversation. He has started to think that the snake might actually have something to do with the disease and she admits to not being sure about it. Mofan realizes Zhu Meng's threats weren't the only reason she was told to get the snake out of the city. It must have been in case the snake was actually causing the disease. She doesn't believe it's the cause, but all she knows is that the snake has always watched over her. It is currently in its weakest state and she will do anything to protect it. Elsewhere, Zhang finishes up racing his bird when they are stopped by a strange sight. It is an absurd number of Magic Court interns flying over the city. Thanks for watching part 18, 10,000 likes and I'll know you want a part 19.